What's up, Sushi Squad? We back again for some more trolls. And today has been a video that is a long time coming, honestly speaking. Uh, I know I've been saying that a lot lately, just with the more recent tutorials and junk like that, but this seriously has been something that has been on my list for a very, very long time, and is a very, very common question that I get, uh, get asked, which is, what are my favorite mounts in the game? Now, this might end up being a lengthy video. I'll see what I can end up doing with it in editing. Uh, I'm also going to have to be very, very picky when it comes to a lot of these mounts, because otherwise we will be here all day. Uh, some of these mounts might be an honorable mention, while some of them are just going to be outright my favorite. I'm going to try my best just to laser focus in on the mounts that are my favorites, though. Uh, because of the way that we're going to be doing this video, though, like, it's not like I go through the list of mounts every single day or anything like that. So, I'm just going to kind of scroll through this list and go through the mounts that I think are worth mentioning, while trying to keep the list open just so that you guys can end up seeing the name of them uh i'll show like my favorite mounts i will show those like walking around in their animations and kind of explain why i think they're really cool uh, i'll try to remember to end up explaining where you get each of these mounts like the origin of them just because i know we got a lot of new trove players that come in like what even is this mount and if i don't you know show it in the collections menu or show the name of it it's like how are you supposed to know right but before we get started with any of that i gotta let you guys know if you are new to Trove, you can check out that sign up link in the description. You sign up with Trove through that link and then anything you end up buying out of the cash shop, I will make a percentage of that sale. It's an awesome way you can support me by literally just buying stuff you would otherwise buy in the game. Uh, it doesn't affect credits purchases. It's just the actual cash shop purchases for real money. So, I mean, if you're buying credits just themselves with, uh, you know, the cash up stuff, which you're actually getting 20% off credits right now. So good time to buy. Uh, but anyways, through that, I'll make a percentage of the sales. It's an awesome way you can support me. Thanks game ago. And thanks you guys and gals for actually doing this because it has seriously made a substantial impact in my life. Like when YouTube isn't really paying the bills as much, uh, the game ago money ends up picking up that percent. So it, it really, really helps me to pay the bills guys. And I want to say my sincere gratification. Is that the right word word? Oh my God. I'm so like, Blah, 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 tripping over my tongue today. I want to just say thank you, okay? It sincerely means a lot to me. I'm not just saying this just because it's something that I'm plugging. It does make a difference in my life because, yeah. Anyways, let's go on with the video. I'll shut up now. So I guess, I mean, I don't really like Prancy uh, Pinata, but I do like the evil one. Most of all, because I like the fact that it's got the uh, pinata wings, like the these are the dark Pegasus wings. There's light Pegasus wings as well. I'll have another video that can focus on my favorite wings or my favorite dragons, because otherwise we'll be here like all night. But this one's really cool. It was the first of its kind. Uh, you ended up getting this from dark chaos vaults, whereas the light Pegasus you get from light vaults. Uh, back in the day, you could only get these out of like the leaderboard, so it was really really pay to win, and there was a lot of people that ended ended up doing like weird cheaty things to end up gaining these and it was just it was almost impossible to get this mount but uh, thankfully now you can just craft the vaults which it's still very very expensive but at least it's possible to end up uh continually getting them instead of the same people getting them over and over again Balefire Phoenix is kind of one of those bittersweet mounts where I never really used it, but it has always been one of my favorites stylistically um if that's even a word as well whatever we'll go with it um just because it's an adventure mount, and I mean, look at this thing, it's awesome. I've always liked the way that this looked, uh, just out of the adventure mounts category, just because there are some adventure mounts that I enjoy, but I always really liked the neon green stuff. Like, even out of the camis, I really like this one. The video effects are a little bit over the top, but I mean, I'll take it. It still looks kind of neat. Um, I wish that these little orbs right there, the yin-yang power-up or whatever, I wish those animated. This will be an honorable mention just because the video effects on this thing look like look like it's passing gas. Giant Iguana's got to be here just because this is my cousin Gary. Uh, I am reptilian and I'm open about it, okay? The Frolicking Fox Spirit is probably one of my favorites just because... It, that was probably one of my favorite updates for Trove. Obviously, the Vanguard update was one of my favorites as well, but the Forbidden Spires biome... Ooh, that's my favorite biome in the game. I absolutely love it. I mean, I could make a video about just my favorite biomes, but honestly speaking, 
that would be probably a tier list and then you already know spoiler alert that the forbidden spires would end up being my favorite uh not only that but it came with an absolutely awesome mount uh from adventure boxes uh another thing too i want to mention very briefly just in this video while i have your attention just because i do mention this in other videos and it might not make sense to a lot of you guys uh it is kind of self-explanatory though when i'm talking about a mount's skeleton i'm quite literally talking about its animations so this was the first mount as far as i recall that had this particular skeleton so this particular animation where it's floating in the air and as you start moving with it it does this kind of glide thing and the legs go underneath it now there are a lot of other mounts like the the, the reason why this is such a big deal when a new skeleton or animation set gets added to the game is because it means that modders can then end up doing that because modding in this game is quite literally just a palette swap you take something that exists you paint something else over top of it of course it's going to end up being a 3d image with voxels but it's pretty much just painting over top something so with this added to the game we got like the dolphin mounts and stuff like that added because they were literally just a uh, reskin of this mount into something else that was a bit more imaginative I, I just wanted to point that out just because I think that it's a neat fun fact that is worth mentioning just about the mounts in general out of the geode mounts honestly speaking none of these are really my favorite i think that the geode caves was kind of i don't know it was an all right update but most of these mounts were pretty disgusting just because the theme of the geode caves was kind of disgusting and it still kind of is honestly speaking the no leaf blower i mean that i don't even know why that's in the geode category but i like it it glides whatever then there's the leviathan mounts themselves uh the leaf blower you have to craft out of uh geode resources and then these you just get very rarely from leviathan drops i of course bought them because I'll never get them as a drop. I love the Whirly Gig in its, uh, you know, the idea of it. I don't like the fact that the camera bobs up and down. It just makes me sick while I'm playing this game, which sucks because otherwise this is one of the stupidest mounts in the game and I absolutely love it because of that. I'm also slowly gathering up, uh, most of all when I find them on the market for a cheap enough price, uh, the recent Delves mounts. So this one is quite crazy uh, because it is literally a Spike Walker mount. Now, this is a very, very rare drop from Spike Walker in the Delves. That's right. You have to specifically fight Spike Walker in the first place and then end up getting this drop ridiculous they moved all of the shadow tower bosses into the delves and with it all of the shadow tower boss mounts uh you still can get a lot of the shadow tower mounts from the bosses within the shadow tower but any of these newer mounts are specifically in the delves and the odds of actually getting them is ridiculous i don't have the skull pin which that one's you get from pinata god which i do really like that one uh so that would be on the list uh, i had these on the test server but i don't have them on the live server maybe once i've got them all i could make a video highlighting them uh but i do like this one just because it's daughter of the moon's gun and i like the lore implications of this being a mount like i just think that's cool that it's literally dot's gun and has like the same v effects of her charge shot and stuff it's really cool obviously you get that from daughter of the moon as a drop uh prancing pinata honorable mention just because as far as i know this was the first pinata in the game nimble nimbus i actually really like this mount it's got a lot of nostalgia value for me because back in the day uh this was the first i think this was the first surfboard mount uh, you've seen lots of other mounts that have ended up using the skeleton. I, I think this was the first one, uh, but this was from uh, Radiant Ruins back when it was the strongest area in the entire game. Uh, and you ended up killing the uh, Sky Giants, these guys that you can see in the art picture right there. You would kill them and they could end up dropping a cache and that would end up netting you the Nimble Nimbus as well as a weird Radiant Horse mount, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong about that. Maybe the Nimbus was just a rare drop from them in general. I don't remember. The Polar Caterpillar. This one just has to be mentioned because look at it. This is not, this is a step up from Nightmare Fuel. This is Demon Fuel actual demons look at this mount for inspiration to create more demons i always kind of like the fast rocket from trove is a wonder but it's never really been my favorite so why am i mentioning it just because it was the first mount to end up doing this which was pretty cool at the time tank turtle gets an honorable mention as well because it was the first land mount that actually shot turrets off of it i think it might still be one of the only ones that does that uh there are some mounts that shoot lasers though but we'll get to that later 
Bulldozer, never been one of my favorites stylistically, uh, but this is a very useful mount. It's probably one of the most useful in the game because you can literally use this to destroy blocks in your club world. Uh, basically, it can destroy like a three block radius in front of you. It's very, very glitchy and laggy and you'll usually rubber band through the blocks and stuff. But still, this is the only way to go if you want to end up at building anything of massive scale in a club world because you're going to have to delete a lot of stuff. Booster Seat gets honorable mention for being one of the early bird store mounts. The War Horse. Now, here's the thing. I never liked the theme of these horses. I always liked Sebastian and Slow Sebastian and stuff. Like the way that those guys looked, I felt uh, worked a lot more appropriately with Trove. Uh, the thing that I never liked about these mounts is back in the day, Trove kind of had this one set theme where everything was always very childish and very cute, which you know, was really, really cool. And then slowly over time, they started to add what I considered try hard items to the game, whether it be the fire ice sage costume or even the Amok aimbot costume for the shadow hunter. These costumes are badass, but they didn't really fit with the whole blocky kid theme of everything else that was added to the game. So it was pretty weird to see these world of Warcraft quality items added to this. Uh, but I did want to mention the War Horse just because I thought the video effects were really cool. And I think that this might have been one of the, like, I remember specifically when I ended up getting this mount was there was this dude. And this is something that would happen very commonly back in the day. These the, This dude bought these mounts out of the cash shop specifically to sell it to players in game for flux or glim or whatever it was back in the day and i i still just feel like it's a weirdly untapped market the fact that all of the mounts that are in the store are just untradeable now like it just still doesn't really make that much sense to me i mean i guess some of this stuff does make sense but it just is kind of weird because it's like by the fact that these mounts could be tradable in game wouldn't that warrant more game sales because people would buy them specifically to sell them it just I don't know because otherwise the problem that I have with Trove and I'm I know I'm going on a rant here is the fact that you pretty much have to grind the majority of the content yourself you are like the game literally takes away the online aspect of a lot of these items in the game because you have to get them yourself for you you got to put in the grind time yourself alone for a lot of these items uh, like chaos chest items for example you have to unbox or craft these chaos chest items yourself which is unfathomable for a new player nowadays unless you're extremely pay to win and buy all of the resources up racing raptor gets another honorable mention just because this god this might have been my first store mount in the game I think, I don't know. I haven't watched my older videos in a long, long time, but I just know that this was a thing. Uh, Sebastian, again, I, I just think that these mounts fit a lot better as horses than the other ones. Shadow Pinata, just because it's really cool. Uh, Spider Mount, just because it's the first of its kind. And speaking of a mount that shoots lasers, that's the laser tops for you right here. This thing literally shoots a, a laser that Back in the day, it was pretty powerful. It would destroy one block for each shot. I don't know if it still does that, though. Uh, all these mounts, by the way, are just from the store. That's why we're kind of skipping over. How do you get them? The Landscaper 8000 is pretty much the alternative to the Bulldozer. It literally has the same function, and it's kind of neat because of that. Uh, I like this one because it's dumb. There's a lot of dumb mounts that I like, but we'll get to those. Uh, this is a pretty good Griffin even though the griffins are not really my favorite. The rocket drill is cool just because it's the same function as a bulldozer, but it flies. So good luck trying to build with that. Uh, the bovine build master. Now this is cool because this one, is this the one I think it is? Uh, yeah, it works in club worlds. And if I'm not mistaken, you'll go to build mode and then whatever bar uh, block you have equipped on your hotbar, this will end up leaving a trail of blocks behind you or 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 it leaves them like under you or something. It's, it, it's awesome that they finally added this, even though it was a little bit too late. These are essential items again, if you're doing massive build projects like I needed this years ago. Also, we can't forget the Gordzilla, the literal pay to win way of getting yourself a dread free skin. This was actually so popular that they did it again with another dread reskin and this one's gross. 
I actually really like the golden skitterling. Most of all, because I have a, a lot of appreciation to Game Ago's version of recent Trove events. Like, Game Ago has been hitting it out of the park as far as the in game events are concerned. Uh, just because they always have like a bunch of stuff that you can grind for free, or you can buy all of it all at once out of the cash shop without having to grind them. And I just think that the Hellbug event this year was absolutely awesome. I hope they continue to do that in the years to come. This is a cat dragon. It's weird, but it's a cat dragon, so I kind of like it. It's not my favorite, but I had to mention it. This is also a rainbow turtle. Ra rainbow turtle, not rainbow turtle. Yeah, I speak English. Good. Then there's this guy. We talked about this one in the most recent pack and why I kind of don't like him. Uh, but he is still pretty cool. Technically, he doesn't even count as a dragon either. Then we got this uh, this thing right here, which is a kind of gigantic wolf that also shoots a laser. Um, it seems like it shoots a lot faster than the laser tops, so I guess that's the cool thing about it. Oh god, now we're on to Luxian. Yeah, I don't even... Is there even any mounts that I like that is exclusive to Luxian? I mean, I guess there's this one. Pretty much a hyper pin X, but instead it's Christmas colors. Uh, the steam cycle, sure, I kind of like that one. And that one's alright as well. Maybe I don't like any of them that Luxian has exclusively. Oh boy, now with the chaos chest, oh my god. So there's the chaos hound. This mount was added a very long time ago. You can tell it's old because of how much crammed video effects it has. Basically, the rarest mounts in the game back when I first started playing... Uh, you knew a mount was rare just based on the amount of video effects that it had. Uh, and this one is over the top. This is a very rare item that you can just get out of the chaos chest, I think, anytime. Um, the problem is that even when it came out, it wasn't really the most popular mount. I, I think just because it doesn't quite know what it wants to be. I, I don't know. It just, even for me, like when I got it, I thought I would appreciate it so much more than I actually did. And it was just like, all right, whatever. These are awesome though. My God, the Tundra Tundra and the Torched Taurus. Like, look at this thing. It's insane the way that the horns work and everything like that. Like, my God, they really outdid themselves with making this one. Uh, and then this one as well. I think these were, were these Sky the Virus? Oh, it's not actually showing. Okay, I forget who ended up making these. But uh, basically, the modder made them. And then the devs threw them all in the game by a bunch of other means. But I, I just love them, dude. Squeakers? I guess. I mean, it's a gliding, like, flying rat thing. I Sure, whatever. Old Chomper, just because it reminds me of Ice Age. Saltwater Taffy, because it literally looks like vomit. These these get honorable mentions. I always liked these two, even if I never really used them that much. The Camel, I low-key kind of like, just because it reminds me of a game from my childhood, Space Station Silicon Valley, which I did do a Let's Play of very, very long time ago. And speaking of green mounts, here is probably my favorite of the Griffins, just because it's all skull and necromancer themed. I really like the way it looks. The Salt Shaker, just because all the salty puns that we got out of it. And even though the Cerulean Squad Quad isn't my favorite of the quad mounts, I just think that this is cool because these were some of the first, well, some of the first vehicles that had animated wheels in the game, which I thought was so cool because I, I come from back in the day when wheels didn't even animate. Oh yeah, and we can't forget the Transphere, but there's a much better one out of Mastery. An Iguana, just because he's one of my related cousins, because, you know, reptile power. The hypes, hype, Hyper Star Hoverboard, I, I like this one because Back to the Future, but also it's got great color palette. Uh, Big Blue Bronto because it reminds me of the giant Lapras monster in Mario 64. Obviously, a lot of my favorite things are because of games that I played as a kid uh, and then things in other games that remind me of those other games. <laughs> This, because it's a laser shark. Sergeant Steel Gills. They should have just called it Laser Shark. Uh, it's a rescan of the laser aerotops and literally shoots a laser. But it's, I mean, it's it's a shark. What more do you want? Even though th this is not my favorite, because I hate the trove colors of mounts. Basically, anything that ends up being this putrid green and yellow is considered trove's official colors. 
but I just like this because it's the first helicopter that was added to the game. And I also like this crop duster because it was an idea that I had for a mod a long, long time ago. And then thankfully somebody ended up actually doing it. Not necessarily related to my idea or anything. I'm not trying to take credit. I just thought the moment that I saw the warplane mount in the game, I thought of why isn't there a crop duster? Except that unfortunately it's disgusting trove colors instead of like red or yellow or something. This is a Flintstone car. I don't like the Flintstones. This is a monster truck. That's epic. This is probably the cutest dragon in the entire game that isn't actually a dragon. Like, look at this thing. And I love the fact that it's got the Corgi dragon mount skin or uh, dragon mount skeleton, I should say, where it literally pedals in the air like a Corgi does when it tries to swim in real life. This is priceless. The Shining Shimmer Bug is cool just because it's a gold version of enemies that are in the game. God, I hope I don't miss anything. This one I like a lot. I like this one a lot. This is really cool just because it's actually like something from the rest of Trove. It's it's one of the companions that you can end up getting from uh, the Geode Caves, but now it's an actual mount. And the fact that they reskinned it off of the Serpent Dragon, beautiful. I don't even know what this thing is. It's a giant soap monster. I mean, I guess that's cool. I completely forgot this was even a thing. <laughs> this one's neat just because it's one of the flasks in game, but it's 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 neat. I like that. Here's a flying trumpet mount. Reminds me of Doom just because of the Doot skeleton. I kind of like this one. Uh, this this was a pretty neat mount when it was added to the game. This is uh, kind of what I meant before when I was talking about the skeletons of creatures because you can see this is the same as the Forbidden Spires um, mount that you get out of the adventure chest. He is a reskin, but it's a dolphin. So that's kind of inventive. I like this bat mount. I want someone to make a mount like this, but it's a gigantic crow that has like kind of necromancer themed green and purple and... I just think it would be so cool. Here's another giant laser shark thing. This thing's actually scary. I don't even remember. Let's just move on to a T-Rex, even though it's a raptor. Oh yeah, and then the stupid shrimp thing. Yeah. And more recently, you guys saw this one, the weird mech thing. I like it because it's like a mini dread. And now we're in the chaos vault section. So these can only be crafted out of the chaos crafter. Uh, this Vaporeon is absolutely awesome i loved when this was added to the game uh this next section is the extra life pack so back in the day try and worlds used to uh donate to the extra life cause um and basically there would end up being these packs that we could buy out of the store and a lot of these are pretty funny cool stuff uh the wheelchair mount is just hilarious i'm sorry but it is okay the light gunship i really like just because i think it's probably like the coolest ufo in the entire game and what do you know, one of my only favorite bouncing mounts. I hate the bouncing mounts, but I like this bouncing chicken mount. Out of the battle arena, I, Blue Terror Turtle gets an honorable mention. Here's that war plane that I mentioned before where I don't really like this mount in general. I just wanted a reskin of it. I do like this warthog though. This thing's neat. Uh, and then out of the badges... I don't remember where you get these specifically. I think some of them are from like opening boxes or like destroying blocks or something. I don't know. But the Infinium Charge is really cool because it's another giant bull. Uh, the Radiant one is another giant bull. And then we got the Striding Starcaster. This one I think is from Daily Logins or something. And this one's just got really nice video effects and is generally just a cool mount. I think it's it's either from Total Days Logged In or it's uh, the amount of consistent logins in a row. Out of the crafted mounts, the Infinity Pony, very, very costly. I remember when I finally got this thing. God, it was difficult. Uh, Scully's neat just because it's got really cool video effects. I don't know if any other mount in the game has the uh, trail that this mount does. Maybe they do, but I, I, I don't really know off the top of my head. The Tundra Thresher, I remember when this was added to the game, uh, there was like other content creators were giving this away on their streams and i remember just thinking oh man i want one so bad i forget whether i crafted this or well i guess i had to craft it right i don't think i traded it off of anyone but yeah then there's the porta potty this is just i mean it's in the game the way that you get this though oh my god you guys have to look on my channel there is a another video that specifically shows you how to craft this because i can't be bothered to explain it right now it's very cryptic but on barry 
This is from Forbidden Spires. You have to go, there's a Forbidden Spires crafting table. Uh, and you quite literally will defeat enemies and forbidden spires. They'll drop griffin wings or phoenix wings or whatever. Uh, and then that's how you end up crafting this mount. I remember I grinded this mount like the day it was added. It took like 16 hours or maybe it was six hours of solid grind. I don't know. It took a long time to grind this, okay? Gardening, gardening. I don't think there's anything in here I like particularly. I mean, there's the tractors, which have functional reason to exist. Uh, the bobble pod, which is hilarious even though you can't actually move with it but generally speaking no i don't i don't really like these shadow tower now these are items that you will craft at the shadowy market which is a crafting table that still is within the shadow tower area despite the fact that you most of all get all of the shadow tower resources and the delves now i know it's weird uh I think you can craft these from delves as well. I, I could be mistaken on that. Uh, it's just the same crafting table. You can always just open up your compass or uh, atlas, whatever, and then just go over here to the shadow tower. And that's where you get the crafting table uh, to craft a lot of these. They just cost shadow tower resources or delves resources now. But I always liked Dreamy Brony. I always thought that one was really, really cool. There's some really good mounts in here. Like this one's not bad. I don't really care for the tentacle theme. Mamunga. Now this one's difficult as heck because you got to defeat Daughter of the Moon like a bazillion times. Or I guess now not even Daughter of the Moon. You just have to open... Uh, I think it's six of the shadow boxes, specifically the ones that require a key that are in the delves that has replaced shadow towers. And then this throne, which is pretty neat. I like that one a lot. And then the uh, mounts that you get specifically from the shadow tower bosses themselves. So Spike Walker Hatchling is a rare drop that you can get from defeating Spike Walker in shadow tower because that's where it originally came from. Uh, but you can also end up getting it from the Delves boss as well. If I'm not mistaken, it's either upon defeating the boss it has a chance to drop and go to your inventory or it was from opening the chest after you defeat spike walker i'm not entirely sure about that uh but either way it's pretty difficult to get these now i mean i guess just grinding shadow tower over and over isn't as bad Th this is the one from pinata there's the ones from hydra which who cares and then there's the dreadnought which i have to relog because i have this set to thomas the tank engine ah yes there we go the beauty God, I remember when this was added. It was super duper hype. I don't think... The funny thing is, I have all of the badges for completing the Ultra Shadow Tower bosses. Of course, it's actually a lot easier to do that now. But I've defeated Dread uh 300 what is it 300 plus 300 times? Or is it 300 again? Defeat him on hard difficulty. Be on normal. Okay, 3, 6... Nine, I've defeated Dread at least 900 times, not including all the times that I fought him before these badges were added to the game, and I have never gotten this mount as a drop. Not once, not ever. Now we're on to the mastery stuff. This stuff you literally get from being high mastery level. Mysterious Orb, I love this thing. This is probably one of the most beautiful mounts in the game just because of the fact that it's all video effects and you're literally inside an orb of beautifulness. Uh, I generally like almost all the mastery mounts just because they always have like some nice cool video effects well not always like this one's kind of lame it's just a reskin of the uh pinata one um or not pinata the light pegasus or dark pegasus uh once upon a time this thing did not look gold it actually looked disgusting i never made a video about it being updated to this golden one I don't know why I never did that because lots of people that I've seen come around are like, dude, the Mega Mexcavator looks stupid. And it's like, yeah, it did back in the day. It really, really did. And then out of nowhere, they just snuck in that it was looking cooler and better. Uh, but then there's this one, which is probably the most beautiful mount you can get from Mastery. I don't use it often enough, but this is, this is like, when you've gotten this, you pretty much have beaten the game. A lazy gold quad, gold turtle. Oh, and then I got this guy too. I didn't do a video on him just yet, but he's kind of disgusting. The next one's going to be the Commander Clausen, which is basically that laser wolf mount, but it's going to end up being a tiger, I guess. Moving on. Fast Frank. I like this because I am the hot dog. Uvenopolis has some cool stuff. Uh, thematically, I, I really like these. 
not necessarily that any of these is my particular favorite by any means but i just generally really like their color palette and all of the neon stuff uh you quite literally get these out of luminopolis so yeah uh, i think you have to craft them at a luminopolis crafting post and of course it costs resources you get from luminopolis luminopolis uh is basically the other sky you know when you go to the neon city and it generates with skyscrapers and stuff that's luminopolis biome technically i guess i like all the birds of paradise just because they all have some kind of unique function this one leaves flowers behind uh this one's probably one of the more practical ones where you literally walk on water because it turns water into ice uh kibiri which is rarer of the ice bird uh this this one's not as good just because it only works on lava and then of course there's gonda god i haven't used gonda without the goose mod for a long long time and my goodness he's majestic isn't he uh gonda will literally create blocks out of thin air it's pretty much the best mount in the entire game once you have enough movement speed that you can be flying around all over the place because uh, essentially gonda gives you infinite jump Ah, uh, yes, the Corgi mounts. Now, while I don't really... Uh, the Corgi mounts were never really my favorite, but Pember, I mean, th this guy's got a special place in my heart because I think this was the first mount that I crafted myself, and it was it was so difficult, you guys, back in the day to end up crafting this, and I was so proud of myself for doing it. I think I have it. I, I think the video is like Epic Fire Mount Get or something. It had a lot of views, but for some reason had a lot of dislikes and it didn't have negative comments or anything. It's just for some reason people didn't like the video, I guess. I don't know why, because this thing was hella hard to get. I guess I like the Infinium one just because it's got cool video effects. Uh, the Basic Cat, that's probably my favorite. I didn't care so much for the other ones. Mecha Cat, that one's all right. Shmeeps, is there any Shmeep I like? guess this one just because it's kind of like my logo but generally i don't really like these the pirate ones is pretty cute actually uh basically where you get all of these so the corgis the cats the shmeep centaurs and stuff is uh very rarely in certain uber worlds uh you'll be able to end up getting these coins very very rarely from enemies uh so let me actually see if i can look at some of these for you guys uh so a meowth for example you have to get from uh u7 and lower adventure worlds for a llama they're found very rarely in all adventure worlds the rat is from u8 and higher uh, so on and so forth uh you get them all just very very rarely the thing is back in the day it didn't have this dumb token system i thought it was actually a lot cooler because back in the day you would literally just get like a corgi or a shmeep would just show up in your inventory and it would be like oh man that's cool you could either use the mount right there or you could craft it into one of the other mounts uh, and then for some reason they changed it to a token which is less cool i don't care about any of the rats despite that there's so many of them same with the pandas they're not really my favorite what about these fancy mounts oh these are literally from how much money have you spent on the game have you spent enough to get the rich raptor i kind of like the rich raptor but i feel like these should get a rework and be like really fancy and have like dollar signs coming off of them or something i don't know uh and then there's all the pinatas which i actually kind of like the star glint one Honestly speaking, I kind of like all the pinatas just because they all have their own kind of color and theme and stuff. But at the same time, they're not my favorite. I don't know. Summer pinata is cool, but orange is not my favorite. Ooh, Halloween stuff. All right. These are just event items in general. So the Balefire uh, Bull, this one was cool. Uh, you get this during the Shadow's Eve event, which is when Halloween's around. The Festive Face Slay, that is from when the Christmas event is around and it glides and has some really, really nice video effects. One of the other very, very rare bouncing mounts that I actually like, just another Halloween mount, nothing special. Uh, it's not rare to get, uh, it's just rare for me to like any of the bouncing mounts, but I like this one just because he's kind of cute. Binatatar, just because the idea of this offends me, that's why I like it. Radiant Butterfly. Man, I remember when this was in the game, I got so pissed. Like, I like it. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of butterfly mounts in general or just butterflies, whatever. But I thought it was so, so lame that they stole the wing video effects from the Air Primordial Dragon. So the Air Primordial Dragon uh, basically was the only mount in the game that had glowing wings like at all times. And it was its defining feature. It's what made it super duper cool. And then they added it to this and like a 50 other thousand other mounts. Uh, even this one has it. It's just kind of a reskin color. So it's not as uh, uh, obvious or apparent as the solid gold. 
But it was so frustrating because it single-handedly made the air dragon lose its cool. Get it? Lose its cool. I like this rolling mount because it's asinine. I think we can all agree that this was the coolest mount you could ever get out of any event. And the fact that they made it so that we could not only grind this thing or pay to win, but it was also tradable too. Like just, just a golf clap for game ago right here, guys, because try and worlds would have never put something like this in the game for free to play players to obtain. And maybe I'm a little biased, but because of it, I, I mean, I've always liked the hell mounts or, or hell bugs, heck bugs, let's call them. I always liked them. I thought that they were very cool. Uh, even back in the day, uh, they are actually from defiance i think which was another try and worlds game that i think that got bought up by game ago i'm not exactly sure but either way it was like a third person mmo it wasn't bad but it wasn't great uh but these were enemies from it and the original way that you had to get one of these mounts was you had to play defiance to a certain point and then you had to link your account to your uh trove account and then you would end up getting one of the mounts which i don't think you do that anymore i think you just get these out of the heck bug event then there was hopsy from the easter uh, event this is a unique skeleton that I haven't seen used on anything else lately. I, I don't think anything else has used this uh, skeleton yet. Then there's Flopsy, which is even better because it's pink and disgusting. Uh, the Pride Ride, I mean, I guess it's a rainbow carpet, so I like it. Uh, and then the Sunfest Unity Pinata. I mean, this thing just deserves death. And then look at that. We got another one of these Jatolis or whatever they're called, but this one is gliding in the air the same as the uh, Spirin Forbidden Spires Adventure Mount. I don't even remember where this was from. It was probably just a random reward from completing an event or something. I don't know. Now we're on to the promo mounts. Don't even ask me where half of these came from. I don't even remember. Um, this, I think... Oh, God. Is this the one that you had to get from a uh, Try and Worlds stream? Because if that's the case, I don't think you could get this anymore. I could be wrong of which carpet it is, but there is one that you had to get from a developer live stream. And it sucked because these promo items should not have mastery on them. Like, ever. I like Robo Raptor though. He was cool. Back in the day, they used to give uh, myself and other streamers promo codes for this guy, which was really, really neat. Because everybody likes a mount more than they like a streamer dream ally. Sage Saurus, I think you can still get this guy by just having your trove account linked with trovesaurus i could be wrong about that here's a skulking skitterling this is the one where you had to play defiance although i think that this is just in the heck bug event now if i'm not mistaken but i don't know uh and then a lot of these were just from logging into the game like the trovian tumbler like i don't even think you can get this anymore and yet it's 50 mastery maybe it's secretly in the store somewhere but for the most part, Tryon Worlds was doing this thing for a while where they had like free mounts for the month or for like a couple weeks. And it was really, really neat. And then they stopped doing it for some reason. And I don't know why. Instead of just like my mentality, Tiny T-Rex was another one. My mentality is add these to the game and make it so that there's one of them for every month of the year. And then it just repeats every year while well, maybe adding one or two different mounts because that way you're constantly creating more content that bulks up the experience of Trove. It's kind of the same as how, and I hate to do this example, but Fortnite. Fortnite is constantly adding new game modes while removing the old ones. Now, if you think about all of the stuff that they've added to Fortnite and if they kept all of the old content up to this point in time, then Fortnite would be one of the greatest games on the planet. Not because it's like super duper fun or anything, but just because there would be so many different game modes if they didn't keep removing all the old stuff. And I think that that's something that I just always appreciate in games is I never understood the idea of removing content because that's somebody like somebody put work into making this mount and making it a login mount on top of that. And to just see that all deleted is just a waste of time. That's that's like why why even do that that's a waste of money and effort maybe that's why try and worlds went bankrupt ah yes this this one was really cool i like this one and now we're getting into the big boy stuff i don't even have wait i do have the throne of games i thought i didn't have that well i got your backy at least now your backy coincidentally we ended on the rarest mount in the game i i mean i would argue why this isn't necessarily the rarest mount in the game I, I guess it technically is but to me a rare mount means something obtainable this is not obtainable 
Okay. This is a very rare mount that uh, try and worlds whenever they would do their live streams, they would give these out very, very rarely. I think there was only like five or six of these in total in the game before they went bankrupt. Uh, and I got very, very lucky to have a fan actually give me a code to this, which is amazing because I get to show it off in videos to you guys. And uh, I'm pretty sure that everyone else who has uh, her had Yabaki quit. So, yeah, um, I would use this mount a lot more often, except its practicality is pretty worthless to me. Uh, it doesn't create blocks like Gonda does. The original version of this mount did. This mount has technically been in the game for years, but it only ended up recently, maybe a year or two ago, being a mount that was obtainable by players through that code offering. Um, and it actually shoots a laser out of the front of it. I don't know why they moved on from this creating blocks to it just shooting a laser. It would have been so much better if it just created blocks. I would actually use it. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching gamers. Really appreciate it. It's that time. I'll see what I can do for cutting down today's video so that it's actually watchable. I mean, my God, there's uh, uh, there's still a lot here. Uh, hopefully, I didn't end up missing any of the mounts, which I might have. And hopefully, more than that, I didn't end up missing uh, an explanation of where you got a specific mount. At the least, I'm pretty sure I showed you guys all the names of all the mounts in my collections menu, even if I skimmed over them myself. Uh, so you can end up kind of finding their origin or finding them on the player market and stuff like that. Because a lot of this stuff... Well, most of them are on the player market. A lot of it's kind of untradeable at this point. But back in the day, it used to be like a lot of this stuff was tradable. And that's how I obtained most of it. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it, guys and gals. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel. And have yourselves a fantastic day. Oh, shirt. Buy the shirt. I like this shirt a lot. I'm still trying to get my logo updated so I can throw that on a shirt as well. But I already have my new logo, but I need to get a higher res version of it. Anyways, yeah. Stay epic gamers.